All right. So today we're looking at exponential and logarithmic functions. So under these exponential logarithmic functions, we're going to look at the rules of indices, fractional indices, and exponential functions. And then the next time that we're going to meet, which is on Thursday, we're going to uh, be sketching the, the, the graphs of exponential functions. So today we'll also talk about, uh, we'll also look at uh, the, 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 the natural logarithms as well. So not to say, in this section we're going to study the functions such, such as three to the power x. So when you look at this three to the power x, uh, now when you look at this three to the power x, this x is called the index and then the index or the expon the exponent or the exponential and then uh, the three is called the base of the function so let us now try to look at the three important rules of indices so So the three important rules of indices, uh, the first one is here. When you multiply two indices, uh, yeah, when you multiply two uh, exponentials uh, with the same base, with the same base, when you multiply two exponential functions with the same base, uh, you simply just add the powers. So you can see what we're doing here when you multiply this x and this x, we have the same base, but different exponents or index, indices. Uh, you just add the indices there. You just add the powers there. And then the second rule here is saying when you're dividing two indices or two exponential functions with uh, the same base, you simply just subtract the powers. And then the last one, but not the least, when you are multiplying the, yeah, when you are multiplying or rather when you have a, an exponential function in the brackets, like this one here, an exponential function in the brackets like that one, and then you have an exponent outside there, you just simply multiply the exponents, rather the powers, yeah. So, these are also some of the things that you need to know. Using these rules, we can deduce that x to the power zero is equal to one, and always x is not equal to zero. And then you, you know to say when you have x raised to power negative one, this is just the same as writing x of, I mean one over x. So if this, okay. So if this is m, negative m, meaning this x will also have m. This is basically what is just here. So we proceed. So let us now look at the fractional indices. So fractional indices are simply talking about the power being, uh, being a fraction. So when, you, when you've been given an exponential function which has powers or indices which are fractions, this is how you work them out. So when you look at this, let's uh, assume maybe you have x and then you have one, while there's n, there's a three. So this can be written as where there's n there, you put a three, where there's n on this part, you put a three. And then you write, you write your side like that. And then you put your X there. So this is how you do that. It's just as simple as this. But not to say when you, when you are dealing with, uh, maybe for instance, you have X raised to power one over two. When you are dealing with uh, two here, two, you don't write anything here. If you want, you can write a two there, but it's not advisable. Yeah, because the square root, the, this square symbol itself, uh, it moves with a two there. So there's no need of you writing that two. OK. 
Okay, so it, it it's just supposed to be like this. Yeah, so you can see even this other example here. When you have x raised to power m over n, the n always is supposed to be there, which is the denominator. It's supposed to be there. And then the m is supposed to be inside like that. And then you can also write this expression. You can also write this expression like that. Okay. So let us try to look at some examples. So today's uh, lesson is very short. I think we'll not even spend more than 25 minutes. It's very short. I just want to introduce you to logarithms and exponents. And then on Thursday, we'll now do the real things, the real logar logarithms and uh, real exponentials. These are just introductions. So the example, find the values of uh, nine, raised to power three over two. Yeah, this may look as simple as they are, but uh, they are problems actually. They actually give a lot of people problems. When you are solving a question and then you reach a, and then you reach a point where you, you find something like this, you don't just have to leave it like this. This can be a, a simplified further. So here, this one can be written as, uh, this one is just equal to following this uh, expression there. You can write this as the square root of nine. Since we have a two there, meaning there's a square root of nine and then following the second uh, rule here, then this three there is our M in this case. So I'm going to put the three there. So the square root of nine there gives you three and then three, you put it in brackets raised to power three. So three raised to power three is simply three times three times three, which gives you 27. The reason why I've solved this, I've seen a lot of people, I've marked a lot of papers where, where a person maybe has three raised to power two. Instead of writing this as three times three, the person goes to write something like this three times two. He just goes directly to multiply this two times three. No, this is not the case. This is equal to this, yes. And this will give you nine. But this is not equal to three times two, which gives six. They are not equal, they are not. So don't ever make this mistake. So, Three raised to power three there means three times three times three, which gives 27. Yeah, so these questions are very simple. This is how you solve this question. So this is 27. Okay. The next question is 32 raised to power two, uh, to power negative two over five. So when you have a negative, remember what I said, I said when you have x raised to power negative one, this is just the same as one over x. So same applies to this. To get rid of that negative, we're going to just say one over uh, this same 32 raised to power what? two over five. So we've, we've made the index positive there, or the index positive, sorry. So what you do there now, say one over, this uh, denominator on the index there, you always put it there, and then you write your h2 there, then the, that two there is always supposed to be outside the brackets like that. So this can also be simplified as, so the fifth root of 32, this simply means that we need to find a number that when it multiplies itself five times, it will give you 32. So when you multiply two times two times two times two times two, you're getting 35. So in short, the fifth root of 32, I mean, you're getting 32, the fifth root, root of set two is just simply two. So this two, when you raise it to power two, you are getting 
1 over 4. So this is the solution. So basically these questions are very straightforward. They are simple and straightforward. You don't need to be failing such questions. When you find it in an exam, it's a free mark. Yeah. When you, can't, when you encounter such a step when you are solving a question, because it's rare for you to find this question in your exam paper. All right. So we proceed. So the other question is saying, show that 3 raised to power 2x minus 1 is also equal to 9x over 3. So how do you show this now? Um, the way you show such questions is, uh, okay, let me just divide the board here. So we're going to have this 3 uh, raised to power 2x. Uh, remember when, okay, when you have, okay, let me just do this. Remember this rule, this side, this rule here. When you're multiplying two decimal, I mean two uh, exponential functions with the same base, uh, you add the powers. So this is what is happening here. Here, it seems like there was a multiplication of, as, of two different uh, exponential functions with the same base, which is three. And then it's like one had a negative like that. So this uh, simply means uh, that uh, yeah, this one, if you want to take it back to this form, it's possible because when you are multiplying two uh, exponential functions with the same base, you simply add the powers. So when you add 2x uh, plus negative 1, you get, you get back to 2x minus 1. So this now, you can, uh, we can write it as uh, 3 uh, raised to power 2 and then you put the x outside. So I've just gotten this, um, where is it, where is it? Oh, it's on the rules, yeah. Pretty sure you, you find time to go through those three rules. Sorry, this is not supposed to be equal. Yeah, so we're saying times and then you can see to say this uh, 3 raised to power 1, uh, power negative 1 can also be written as 1 over 3. 1 raised to power 3, 1 raised to power negative 1. I mean 3 raised to power negative 1 is just the same as 1 over 3. So you can see that this 3 raised to power 2 is nothing but equal to 9. Then we put this x as its power like that. So this is 9. And then multiply it by 3. So this is already over 1. So 9x times 1, you get 9x. 1 times 3, you get 3. You can see that this is just the same as that. Hence, the question has been solved. OK. We, we, now, we now look at the exponential functions. So the exponential function or equation is a function that is defined by f of x being equal to a, um, being equal to a raised to power x, where a is greater and a is never equal to zero. I'm uh, sorry, a is never equal to one. And x is a real number. A is called a base and x is called an exponent the base a of fx is required to be positive. If the base were a negative number, the value of the function would be a complex number for some value of, for some values of x. So what, they're trying to, what, what this stat statement is trying to explain here is uh, this a is always supposed to be positive, and then this exponent, rather, and th this indice or index uh, can either be negative or positive, there's no problem. But where the problem comes in is when the A is negative, because the, when the A is negative, it means that you now turn into, or, or rather you now have what what is called a complex number, yeah. So, oh, what about a natural exponential function? 
So a natural exponential function is denoted by, by e to the power x, e to the power x, e to the power x. And then for it to, to, to be called a function, it needs to have f of x this side for it to qualify to be a function. So this E is normally used in the exponential growth and decays. We're going to do that when we start doing, when we start looking at practical examples on uh, logarithms and uh, exponential functions, we'll do uh, radioactive decay and everything. Because I've seen Mr. Martin likes bringing such questions. So for all real values or all real numbers of X for the function, the function defined by the function is defined by f of x being equal to e to the power x and this marks the end of today's lecture uh, let me just uh, introduce you maybe to a few things on logarithms when you have let's take for instance you have a uh, let me not use a when you have y being equal to a to the power x. When you are changing this to logarithm, this, this one is called the exponential form. Now, if you are changing this to, to logarithmic form, you simply say x. So x instead of y, x is the one that is going to start. x is equal to log, log uh, x is equal to log y base, yeah. So this is how you convert them. If you are converting this log y base a to exponential functions, it, me it simply means that this base is going to be raised to x, and then we're going to have your y like that. Then you have converted it. So these are the few things that you need to put in mind because they are very important you need to know them and we're going we're also going to look at the rules of logarithms and indices ah and we've looked at indices the rules of indices now we're going to look at the rules of uh, logarithms yeah so why is it that log 10 is equal to one why is it why, why is log 10 uh, equal to one I'm going to show you all those rules. They are very simple because there are also identities that are, that are involved in logarithms. So you need to know all those things. I'm going to show you in the next lecture. So shalom, shalom. And you guys, please make sure that you submit your work because in the previous lectures, like I think there's something there, which is, I think, an exercise. And you need to submit that. I need to know whether you know what we are, what, 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 where, whether you are understanding what you are learning or not. So you need to be submitting your work. Anyway, thank you for attending today's lesson. See you on um, Thursday for the next lecture that we're going to have. And you are lucky that there's nothing here, there's no exercise, but make sure that you answer the previous exercises that I've been giving you. They are always at the end of the lecture slides. So make sure that you answer those exercises and submit. Let me know what, whether you have understood or not. All right. So I'm ending the meeting now.